All right, I'll do a quick little intro, and then we'll just hop into it. I know your time is limited. I know you got another one coming up, so I don't want to interfere too much. But a real quick shout out to Clear Cliff. Thank you very much for this CBD drink. I need it after the weekend I've had. Uh, went to a concert and did a little bit of old man mosh. You know, just not really moshing, but just kind of little shoves here and there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, welcome everyone to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with Ken Andrews of Failure. How are you, brother? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Like I said, uh, I'm a little tired, a little sore, but feeling good. Mm -hmm. Feeling happy that I finally connected with you. I've been a fan for a very long time. I uh, I had Kelly on in the first, I think, the first year or so of the show before uh, before we had video, but okay, just doing audio. But this was before. I think it was right after the Heart is a Monster album came out, before the the EPs that you released. The, um, the EPs, the EPs were um, in the future, from in the future. This is so like yeah. just to, just so everyone knows the uh, like chronology. We failure made three albums in the nineties. For, we were together from 90 to 97 and we made three albums and then we're just releasing our sixth studio album and we've done three since 2015 yeah yeah it makes me very happy that you're doing that because a lot of these you know bands that have gone uh and taken like an extended break like yourself you know when they come back they'll drop one more album and then it's just kind of they just disappear or you know don't really work on it i when i when you guys came back with uh the heart is a monster it was a fantastic album i thought it was a perfect follow-up to fantastic planet but uh okay. you know i i kind of felt like well we're gonna get this really good album and then we might not hear from them again and then you started doing the eps i'm like oh okay all right you guys are back back so that's good well we just had a good time you know <laughs> it's just like we like the result of what we made with that Heart is a, with the heart is a monster and we enjoyed touring honestly like uh, for me a lot more i didn't i don't really like touring in general but like this touring since we rebooted with failure has been really fun really fun how it's, do you uh, go ahead well just you know in the 90s it was just like there were so many bands and i, I guess there's still a lot of bands but it, it just seemed like you were just fighting to just have anyone recognize what you were doing. Um, that's where we were at. And then when we reformed in 2014, we put our first show on sale and it sold out in five minutes. That never happened in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> that like our, our ticket sales and our just overall I guess awareness or popularity or whatever you want to call it is is different than it than it was in the 90s sure yeah and i, I mean it's kind of picked up you know i know it's been called that before but like cult heroes you take a you guys picked up like a cult after you guys stopped playing yes it's interesting <laughs> yeah there's like a i don't know 30 or 40 percent of 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 our fans now i it's hard to really know the percentage it's probably different in different areas but like the those people definitely didn't know us at all in the 90s because they were probably too young mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, i mean for me for example like when you guys in the 90s i had heard of you i heard a couple of the songs like uh space song and um you know, the nurse who loved me and then kind of that was it it was kind of like the, the, like you said there's so many bands and afterwards like when perfect circle started doing the, the i think they did a cover i believe of mm -hmm. the nurse mm -hmm. that's kind of like wait i know that song and then i'm like wait that's failure and then i started you know go back and and listen to the album so i kind of in the middle of your break is when i fell in love with the band as well so when i when you guys came back it was really exciting like oh i get to go see them live that's awesome i never thought that would happen you know uh, i think i saw you guys at wrecking ball in atlanta a while back i was like one of the first few shows that you guys did okay yeah, yeah Re was, wreck wrecking ball is was that an event or a venue it was a venue oh uh, no sorry no the venue was heaven or hell and okay. the, it was an event it was like a festival 
and you guys were like it was one of your first shows and i, I okay. know like glass jaw played and yeah okay yeah was noel did a reunion there too it was like there was a couple uh -huh. of reunions involved so we all uh my buddies and i took a trip from florida up to to see the show it's fun wow awesome thank yeah, you yeah. and then i moved out to california i'm living in los angeles now and oh. then you and you guys announced that uh, I went to the Glass House show to see uh, in Pomona to see the Fantastic Planet in its entirety with the film that you guys put together. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a really interesting film. I was dying to find it online. Is that something that is available? Like I've been trying to look for clips of you know I just see people with their cell phones filming, on, <laughs> but I didn't. I haven't found the actual footage. Well, I mean that that footage is not ours. You know, I mean, oh, it's, it's okay. all, it's all other filmmakers. It, we did, we didn't originate it. Um, so I think we just don't feel super comfortable distributing it as if it was ours. It's more of a, it's more of a, you know, sort of s referencing the things that influenced us. Okay. So telling people like, you should check this out, like check out the original fantastic planet french animated film because not only did we get the t title from the uh for our third album from it but like the movie itself both its themes and and style really influenced the record but we you know, and also it's like sort of soundtrack and and audio effects and stuff that they used in that film mm -hmm. we kind of aped some of that as well yeah. So, um, yeah, part of the footage I saw that really struck me was like a, it was like a zoom in to kind of like a Google Maps zoom in to someone. It goes into their cells and kind of into like the psychedelic, uh, trippy looking thing. And, and that really stuck with me. I was like, man, what is that? I want to see that again. <laughs> well, that's easy. That's that, that, that film is, it's a famous documentary. I don't know if it was the 70s or 60s. Um, but it, like I think Charles Eames, the famous furniture designer or designer, had something to do with it. Oh. It is called Powers of Ten. Powers of Ten. Okay. Powers of Ten. Like it keeps zooming in by Powers of Ten or zooming out to like the the universe, basically. Yeah. But but I mean, it it was really well done for when it was made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it I still it holds new. up. Yeah. yeah, it still holds up. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a bit about the new album. I mean, that's why we're here. Uh, you got you got the the December third release for Wild Type Droid, mm -hmm. and the little press release I read uh, says that it's kind of you're you're kind of seeing this as a the end of the space theme for you guys, right? Is that, am I reading that right? Yeah, I, I didn't say that. So no. okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is. I guess we'll see if the next record still has another sp space reference on it. Then well, I was going to say there's a there's an astronaut on the cover. So, I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I think I think I think what happened is, is we, we, we we've all, we've been talking about sort of moving on from the space imagery in 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 the covers and and whatnot and even in the lyrics and i just don't i guess it wasn't time to stop doing that because <laughs> when greg saw this particular image uh he was just like that's the cover and i'm gonna fight fight for it so um it, it really it really it, it kind of you know sunk up with a lot of the themes we were talking about on some of the songs so can you can you talk about that a little bit just to see what we're expecting moving in i mean I, i'm i know a lot of your previous lyrics they're 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 ambiguous in terms of you know th there is reference to like a person you're it seems like you're talking about someone uh but i know that it's you know there it's up for interpretation really so is there any uh anything you could talk about in terms of lyrics for themes in this new album um Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, first of all, I should say that, you know, the evolution of the band since we rebooted in, in 14 has been that Greg has become a more of the dominant lyricist mm. in the band. Okay. 
So, I mean, I still, don't get me wrong, I still get my hand in there, and I do have a few, like two or three songs that are all all my lyrics on the record, but um, I th it's one of those things, like, in, in the 90s, I, I would say, we, like, Greg and I were kind of fighting for, like, the leadership role in the band, even though we never said that, that's kind of, there was this kind of tension, mm. and now we're just like, Hey man, you you sh you should do this one because it's you do a great job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's more like enjoying and leaning on each other's, um, you know, uh, different talents or or yeah, I guess instead yeah, of that's, like that's maturity, man. You guys, you know, it was a long break. You guys were kids basically when you did the those last album in the nineties exactly i mean <laughs> you're just full of a lot more kind of bs i think in your 20s sometimes mm. you know <laughs> and yes. that, that's what's made it's funny because being in a rock band people are like well that's a young man's game and and it it, it is uh, or a young person's game but for me i i'm having way more fun than i did in the 90s I mean, I, I had 90, I had, I'm sorry, I had fun in the 90s, but there was more, there were more problems. And now there's like, now it's like, I think we're doing it because we really are enjoying it. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Because, you know, someone with that long of a tenure, you, you know, you seem to, some people get burned out, you know, they just don't want to do it anymore. Or they get they're like, I'm fine. I, I'm, you know, financially or whatever. I don't need to work anymore. Uh, but it's good that you're doing it out of a passion and not, you know, to, to make money. And I think that's the difference too. In the nineties, you're probably doing it to make some money to get, you know, to get out there. And then now as you're an adult, like you've got, you got shit figured out so you can actually do things responsibly and, you know, know how to, properly organize all the things you got to do tour managing and whatever else you know yeah and i think you're just a, a clearer about making decisions you yeah. know just big bigger decisions come maybe just a little bit easier as you get older yeah now you were mentioning too that um you you weren't you're not a fan of touring uh all that much and uh and but you're having fun now that was, uh, I would assume, prior to the pandemic. I mean, you guys haven't played a show. Have you played a show since the lockdown and everything? No. No shows no. yet. Correct. That's correct. In fact, we were like, I think a lot of bands, we had significant shows actually canceled. Mm. We had shows in July 2020, nine shows that were, I think seven out of the nine were already sold out. And so that was... Were they real... rescheduled or completely canceled? Well, um, they were canceled. Okay. And the reason we did that is because they were kind of like special shows that a lot of people were flying into. It was going to be three nights playing, each oh, right. night playing one of the 90s albums. And it was only going to be LA, New York, and Chicago. And so we found out that so many of the people that had bought tickets were flying in and making a whole event out of it. And we just didn't want to have to reschedule and they'd, then, then they'd have to reschedule all that travel again. And, you know, like, a, I mean, some people had trouble getting refunds, you yeah. know? Yeah. So we were just, and it was so, so much was unknown too about what was going to happen going forward at that point that I was just like, yeah, let's just cancel it and just not get, give any false hope. Right. That we can do these shows. And so now we're just, um, well, I'll just say we're going to announce our, our live performance plans in January. Okay. Seems like a good plan. Uh, a lot of, Big offices are going back to the office in January too, so I think uh, I think everybody's starting to feel comfortable enough to not say we're back to normal, but at least try and get things moving again for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, the, the, like you said, it was so uncertain for a while. Like I'm, I've been so happy that I've gone to a couple shows here and there, 
recently and you know being there i'm like all right it still feels weird but i'm glad we got shows back because uh the, you know there was a time when i thought no shows were going to ever happen again I, th I thought this was the apocalypse i started buying like survival gear and shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 who, i mean and i'm still pretty I'm still a little anxious about it because I'm worried about variant, you know, new new variants. Right. So that's what I was. That was my question leading, and we kind of kind of went on a tangent. But like, my question is like, you know, how are you feeling about getting back on the road? You know, potentially in January with all of this that's going oh, on. Oh no. And, well, it won't. It won't be that soon. It definitely will. We're we'll gonna, announce we'll, it in January. We'll announce in January. So yeah, we won't be on the road in January. Okay. Um, but yeah, we 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 are gonna tour in 2022 um and yeah i i am i am concerned i i mean if if thing if nothing changes and we keep going the way we're going right now uh we should be fine um because there's bands touring right now and they're ma making it happen and, i mean some of them are running into uh, half you know half filled rooms because not a, everyone is super stoked about going out you know yeah. yet uh so you know we just, we just want to be doing it at a time where we feel like you know people will be confident yeah, I think, it's, I think it'll be good, too, to give give it some time, because right now there's like an overabundance of shows that everybody's playing. And the second the doors open, it was like a flood. flood. You know? <laughs> Total flood. Well, so many, I mean, oh, I mean, the, the yeah, that part of it was really damaged. Yeah. You know, the whole system was really damaged. Yeah, yeah. Like now we got festivals, you know, every weekend for like, every time i look online there's another giant festival with every band ever and everybody just wants to get out and play yeah i mean you know it's a couple of years i mean so you mentioned that you had to cancel tours and all that i mean was there significant financial damage for you that you had to recoup like how how bad was it well yeah i mean those shows alone were i mean for the band was pretty a significant amount of income yeah definitely so um you know we were having special merch made and like vip special vip stuff so there was like a lot a lot of moving parts to that and it just got erased you know in in one one day so yeah that that was that was hard um you know for the most part i'm kind of fortunate because i've i've been working at home my whole life basically you know yeah. i'm either working in my own studio or i'm working in um a bigger more uh, a commercial studio mm -hmm. and so commercial studios people weren't re really doing that because they didn't want to be in close proximity to each other but i still had this studio so i yeah. was i was fine to keep working well that's good that's good i'm glad to hear you stayed busy I mean, how was the how was the mental health for you? I mean, I I know a lot of people, the, the fear of not playing shows, and then you know, prior to the pandemic, I know you had a very political video on your solo project. Mm -hmm. I know prior to the pandemic, we had to deal with four years of nonsense as well. So, I mean, how how have you how was this time for you in terms of mental health, keeping you know positive or inspired to you know even write music at that point? Yeah, and well, for me uh writing music is super therapeutic mm. for for anxiety and stress and those are the two things that i think we've all had plenty of in the last five years yeah <laughs> stuff uh, that i never thought i would have to deal with myself i never thought i would have panic attacks and now here i am at my turning 40 and you know <laughs> trying to keep it together it's, it's it's yeah it's it's yeah i don't even it, it, and you don't even know when you're feeling stress sometimes you don't know it's happening what or what is happening to you or why you're reacting a certain way because you're kind of you're you're telling yourself no everything i'm i'm fine but you know you're not yeah <laughs> you're not fine because you're stuck in the house and i mean for me this the stress was 
uh, had a lot to do with my kids because I have two grade school kids. Oh yeah, who in just you know the blink of a of of a day w- had to come home and and do school from home, which was kind of crazy. I mean, it was good. It was good in the sense is that I'm used. I'm used to working at home, so. Uh, it wasn't that odd for me to be here, but they, they weren't used to being at home right. um, and not being able to see their friends. And that was, that's gotta be tough. I, I, I that was one of the biggest worries I had during the, the thing was that the kids that are growing up in this and being born into this, like this, that's all they know is the, the wa- four walls they live in and the family members. And that's it. It's like, that's not great. <laughs> I what I've noticed in the because I I'm around a lot of kids because I have like I said I have a, a a fifth grader and a seventh grader so um the kids are really pretty in my estimation pretty resilient with the virus like they understand it they just like okay yeah there's a virus like it could hurt us we'll we'll wear a mask at school. The thing that I think the kids are being more stressed on is what's going on with the political divisions in the country. Oh, yeah. That's much more difficult for them to process. They don't understand why the adults are fighting fighting no. and being so extreme uh, in their positions and... Yeah, that's the part that I think is much more troubling from from a mental health standpoint for the kids. Yeah, I don't blame them. I'm an adult, but I also like I'm kind of like that in that sense where when I look at what's going on, I'm just like, what's happening? Why? Why are we doing this? Why are you yelling at each other and tweeting that out and this out? Like, I thought we were all supposed to like band together in case the aliens show up. What do you? What are we? Do- <laughs> what are we doing? It, yeah. <laughs> Well, aliens, yeah, or even our, you know, earthly enemies, you know, yeah. or or whatever, you know, like other countries or whatever. Yeah, that's just doesn't the, make the, sense. the it doesn't make any sense. And you know, I mean, one of my kids saw one of those a picture of those two guys that were wearing the shirts that said, "I'd rather be a Russian than a than a Democrat." Jesus, that's a shirt. <laughs> well, I don't know why I'm surprised. Of course, that's a shirt. <laughs> yeah, of course it's a shirt. It was a shirt a year. It was a shirt a while ago. Yeah, I'd and, rather be a Russian than a Democrat. Yep. What is so okay? <laughs> Wait, I thought they would call the Democrats communists. What's going on? Well, that's what I'm, <laughs> that's that is the exact. It's it doesn't make any sort of logical sense. And the kids pick up on that. They were asking me to explain. Wait, I thought people on the right like want to have uh, you know uh, big military spending and you know hard line with our enemies overseas. Why are they wearing a? I'd rather be a Russian than a Democrat. Sure. Yeah. And it's just like, well, how do you explain to your kids that? You know, a huge. <laughs> the part, world huge, has gone mad. <laughs> the world, well, yeah, a huge per, at least a huge percentage of this country no isn't you know interested in making sense anymore. I, I yeah. So I mean, are you feeling that this is something that we have to just kind of hunker down like a hurricane and wait for it to get better? Like, how do we pull out of this situation? I mean, it, to me, you know, I've discussed this with a few people, but you know. The one that keeps coming up is like, oh, well, we just need to split up the country. And I'm like, well, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> that sounds. Well, it, but it's not. It's the, the divisions aren't geographical. Yeah. The divisions are which. It, the, the division is basically this. Do you watch Fox News or not? Right, right, right. That is the division. Do you. Or it's, it's, it's primarily that. And what face groups, Facebook groups you're in. Mm-hmm. Did you get the new Truth social media app on your phone? 
No. Are you a member of Parlor? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's 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 where the division is. So that has nothing to do with geography. Yeah. Now, there there are some pockets where it's you know densely packed with people certain who group. yeah a certain group. But I mean, yeah, it's it's not really a geographic thing. So that's not that's not a viable solution whatsoever yeah people I mean, say things all the time like oh california should secede and i'm like well do you i mean i experienced more racism in california than i did in florida you know i was walking around manhattan beach and i got called a mexican even though i'm cuban you know and manhattan beach is famous if you walk around you'll see the trump banners and stuff everywhere so i mean there there's a pocket of that all over california it's not all just liberal california as everybody likes to say you know, like there's there was the, plenty of stop the steal rallies in Southern California. Oh yeah. Plenty. Some. Yep. <laughs> you know, and I know that, you know, we saw the elections happen and the, the recent ones with the governor and, uh, you know, Oh my God, he swept, you know, he swept the Newsom swept the Republicans and I'm like, yeah, but I don't know, man, they're still out here. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I mean, this is the, this is why, you know, a lot of my friends, when when Biden won, there was like a real relief. And my relief was, if I had any, was like probably a few minutes, you know? I mean, I just, I don't think the level, the, the, the level of tension that, you know, the, the right wing media is, is, is creating and just completely inflating every day i don't think it can be sustained i, I, I where, where nothing bad is happening eventually somebody or something is going to snap L like like january 6 you know the, that that was a snap you know people kind of lost their minds mm -hmm. and then and I don't know. I, how is it not going to happen again? Yeah. I just, how, how is it not going? There's no, been no, uh, you know, you would think, I mean, some people were like, okay, after when January 6th was happening, I heard people say, okay, a lot of, a lot of people are going to jump ship now because this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Nobody jump ship. Nobody yeah. jump ship. On, on, you know, they're just as entrenched as they, they're, they're even more extreme because now you've got basically half of registered Republicans saying they believe violence is warranted to preserve what they view as, you know, their, their way of American life, I guess. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that is. Um, I think we kind of know what that is, but. The good old days. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'll tell you, I've never been one to be like, oh, I need to, I need to own guns or whatever. Mm -hmm. but when stuff started getting weird, I was like, yeah, I need to get one, just one for the mm -hmm. house. Because who knows? Who knows? These dudes come in with their guns. What am I going to do? You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, one gun's not going to stop them all if they do come into my house. But I'm not going to... I, I, it's 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 unfortunate that I have to resort to like I guess I should get one so that you know when they show up with theirs, then I can defend myself. Otherwise, you know, I'm gonna be just another victim. I guess the whole scenario. Yeah, and, just... and but that kind of you know it sounds like what they're saying. Oh, I gotta keep my weapons. It's like I'm not like that at all. I just you know I have a wife and a family. I don't want to be caught off when you know off guard when things get crazy <laughs> yeah just the, uh, the only thing i would say is just be careful because when you oh, like there, a lot of act accidents happen you know For sure yeah 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 no, i have mine locked up it has a lock on the you know on the yeah. trigger and all that stuff so you know I, i'm not i'm not flaunting it i'm not on on the ig you know of course of <laughs> course yeah I, I i get that but you're not alone i mean so many people have 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 begrudgingly uh, armed themselves. Yep. And so now it's just like there's like as many guns as people in this country, and there's way more bullets than there are people here. 
So that's that's why are are we living in a powder keg? I don't probably. I mean, look, man, history history has shown like civilizations have collapsed before, you know, and like Rome and everything. So it's not so far fetched to think that things will just stop being the way they are. And uh, I think the pandemic helped a lot of people understand that, like, hey, life can completely change. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be on your toes and figure out if you want to survive, you know, what do you got to do? Start zooming and start doing live streams, I guess, like, you know, figure it, figure it out. And at any day, any day, shit can collapse again and we have no internet and what are you going to do? You know? So I, I, I think hopefully people are getting more prepared in terms of, of being able to react accordingly in a positive way, not in a negative, violent kind of way, like, you know, riots and, and people with guns. Like, we, we're talking on a very uh, day that, that we just, I just saw the, the Rittenhouse kid got out not guilty on the whole thing that he did. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not getting any better. So it's going to get worse. That's, that's what, you know, that's come on just re just relax it's biden what and you're gonna work out we're all gonna be fine yeah no <laughs> no <laughs> you know there's too it's too it's too many mm -hmm. it's too many people you, you can't you can't isolate 70 million people mm -hmm. you, yeah, say what you will about you know how bad trump was like they he the votes were close <laughs> there was a, still a lot of people that went out to vote for him so those people don't just go away now, you nope. know, and especially. Well, and they, most of them think that Biden is illegitimate, right? He's illegitimate. He's sleepy. Joe, he's not doing anything, all that stuff. But on top of that, they're, they have this entitlement or this empowerment that they've been given by the previous president where they feel, you know, fuck it. If, you know, if things don't go my way, we'll just grab our guns and go charge the Capitol. Like we did, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, like it's, that, that guy said at the town hall last week you know when uh what i want to know is when can we start using the guns and start killing these people did you, did you see that i did not see that no and that's a direct quote i don't think i got it wrong at all like that's and here's the, but the craziest part is that he wasn't like you know hooked off stage he was right. cheered by the whole freaking crowd Oh boy. Well, I guess it's time to start making plans to move to South America. <laughs> Somewhere else. I don't know where to go. <laughs> it's nuts, man. It's nuts. But not wanting to get too sad about the scenario. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, go on. I, I, I think, you know, just bring, tr trying to bring it back to the album, I, I think. When I listen to the record, I hear that anxiety. Yeah, in in my from myself and from the other guys in the band. You know, it's just like there's, I, it's like a, a bit of a dichotomy because I kind of feel like you know, you know there was a lot to celebrate for us because we're enjoying being creative together and it's just like really cool, but actually the world is not very cool at all right now and so i think this your record is very, i think this i mean this is one of the darker records i think we've made you know because of that i don't think it was just wasn't possible to have uh things that weren't kind of heavy in that sense so, so going back i know i asked you earlier but i don't think we we actually went there but thematically like lyrically that you're saying, you know, you'll hear this anxiety. I mean, is there, uh, is it mostly like that? You, you were saying like the dark, heavier themes. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, we talk a lot about like, what is reality, you know, and, and the idea of the shared experience just kind of evaporating in a few short years from Facebook, essentially. I mean, Facebook, I think when, when all said and done, if what, whatever's left of, you know, the U S in 10 or 20 years, we'll look back and we'll see, you know, Facebook 
took the shared American experience and just destroyed it. Well, they're still working on it. They renamed uh, the company to Meta, Meta, and now they're trying to move everybody to the virtual space, virtual reality space. I mean, it's getting. Uh, they're they're still going. They're still trying. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it's uh, you know, it's it's rough, but I guess you got to adapt with it. If 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 the band can find some kind of success, reaching some people. Uh, you know, I, at least to me, I know Facebook is, is terrible and social media is pretty bad for people, but it does help get your message across a little bit to some more people, you know, I think. Yeah, it's a tool and it, it can be used for, for good stuff and, and enjoyable stuff and creative stuff and artistic stuff. For sure. And it is used for all of those things. It's just, it's also being used to um to, to to divide for profit yeah yeah there's that too it's a rough thing i think you know I, i've said this before and people are probably already tired of hearing it but you know there should be some kind of exam like a driver's test uh, to be able to post stuff on the internet i i've, I've been saying for years and and, and, and it just never gets anywhere with people is i think you should have to have a driver's license to go on the internet the same as you do with a car. A car is a deadly vehicle. We have figured out how to make sure that everyone who drives a car will be held accountable mm -hmm. for whatever they do when they're behind the wheel. I mean, who gets away with anything in a car anymore? Hardly. No. I mean, no one, basically, right? I mean, there's helicopters. And they chase you. The, the new cars, the Teslas have cameras and GPS and they can lock your car down. <laughs> Everything is filmed. Every intersection is being filmed by 10 different cameras pretty much, right? So so we figured out how to hold the people accountable for their actions when they're driving. We have not figured out how to hold people accountable when they're spreading misinformation, when they're when they start an account a fictitious account under a, a you know a dummy name just to post some revenge porn or you know what i mean mm -hmm. they're doing all these things that they can't and would never do if they could be held accountable and um one way i think you hold people accountable is you make them be themselves online and i do think there's a downside to that, sure. Maybe there's some anonymity, victim anonymity stuff mm -hmm. that that might be impacted. Maybe they could get a special exception or something. I don't know exactly how prevalent that even is, but I do know something that's very prevalent, and that is people disguising who they are and doing heinous stuff on the internet that they would never do in real life. Yeah. And that could be stopped easily by just, you gotta have a license to log in. You gotta, every time you log in, you have to show your ID. Boom. I, and, and, and I know some people will probably jump out of their seats like, ah, it's infringement of our freedoms, blah, blah, blah. No, the, way to, the way to solve it. Let's is, is freedom being like, disguising yourself and committing crimes that's not freedom yeah. that's being a criminal yeah exactly no i think uh if we let people you can you can look at the internet without a license just look you can okay. be a, you can be a spectator but if you want to post you need a license i think yes yeah. i think that works that way you know all the information is there it's free you can take it but if you want to contribute <laughs> You had to take some tests so you can be, like you said, to be held accountable and see if you're even mentally capable of putting stuff on the internet without, you know, just ruining someone's life. Like, that's how we have a lot of this QAnon bullshit. It's just all internet crap. Like, it's all the dudes from 4chan and 8chan. Like, it's insane. Under aliases. Yeah. The, that's, it, there's just nothing. I, I, if you were to weigh the benefits of, the internet's anonymity on society against its detriments. I just, it's like one versus a thousand. I mean, yeah. 
there's just not enough benefit to maintain this crazy anonymity. I mean, the, you like, you can't, there's so many places where you go in, like you, they, they have to see your face or you can't keep going. Mm -hmm. Right. They want you, you have to be identified, you yeah. know, and what's wrong with being identified? I don't really understand that. You, you're well, just being asked to prove who you are. Yeah, people That's don't have all. that. People don't have that self-esteem. People don't have that uh, confidence in themselves, I think. And there's a lot of people that just look, uh, look. they're trying to do stuff, but they don't want people to know it's them. It's weird. It's a weird thing. Uh, yeah, but how much of that stuff is good stuff? <laughs> no, it's yeah, not a lot. No, uh, none. Uh, none, yeah. I mean, you're, not, you, you're, you're creating aliases to do nefarious shit. And then you're and you're talking about just what's even widely available now. Like you know, if you go to 4chan or 8chan, there's a dark web. Like that's a real thing that people log into to buy illegal stuff online. It's nuts. I've never even seen it. And I consider myself a computer guy. Like I build computers. I I know about you know technology, but I've never found the dark web. I don't want to either. I'm not looking for anything. It's just I keep hearing about it, and I've never actually seen it. And I'm like, I you know it. Maybe it's a cool party I'm not invited to, but guess what? I don't really want to go either. Well, have, it's I, not I, a cool party. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. I, it's called the dark web, I think, for a reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are not who they say they are. You can be sure of that. Mm -hmm. And you could be sure that, yeah, there's some dark and nefarious and probably illegal things going on there. Why? Why, why why are we leaving the internet unguarded like that it just seems crazy to me yeah we it's don't a, it's, it's like having a freeway over here where you don't have to have a driver's license mm -hmm. so anything that happens over here on this freeway hey it's the wild west you kill somebody what a, go home and have a like yeah. kyle rittenhouse you know yeah it's pretty nuts well, going, I wanted to go back a little bit. You mentioned that the themes of the album are kind of like, what is reality? What is existence? All of that. Uh, I, I want to get a little deep with you just real quick. And, you know, what is it to you? Do you what do you think? Are we, are you in that mindset of this is all frequency and we're tuned into a channel like this? That's the way I see it. Like we we're energy and we're tuned into this particular channel. And once we sleep and do dreams or, you know, have an outer body experience via a car accident or whatever it may be, you're, you're not in the, on that channel anymore. You've tuned the radio to another channel and you're kind of visiting, like listening in, and then you can come back to that radio station when you want to exist here. That's usually how I see it. But where, where, where do you stand on that? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I probably stand in way too many places. <laughs> and, and instead of one you know like because i'm i'm ambivalent about it i mean there's so many i mean just just the you know kind of theory that you just put forth there that where it's like is, is, is existence a simulation I, that's all over the album oh yeah that's mostly coming from greg i think he's a little more a little more follows that um and there's been a lot of, there's been more of that in in culture, I think, in the last year or two. I think people have had more time to think about that or something during the pandemic. There's yeah. been articles about it, like, you know, yeah, may, maybe our real lives are the dreams. Like, what, the, you know, I mean. And I feel popular culture is definitely embracing that idea a little bit more. Like, you even look at, like, Marvel movies. Like, yes. up, the next couple ones that are coming out are the multiverse type thing. And it's, you know, every, Rick and Morty cartoons are all about that stuff. So I do feel that, I guess, more of a general populace is starting to accept the idea that maybe there are some weird things going on, you know? It's so, it's so, you have this, this metaphysical conversation going on about what, what is existence and how can it possibly be verified. And, but at the same time, you having this other conversation where it's like, okay, but like boots on the ground, like what, what is actually happening here right now? 
with verifiable or you know some you know uh, facts that we can see with our own eyes are being denied it's like there's there's so much it, it, just the feeling of being completely untethered you know i mean you've you've got like the small small reality whether or not someone won an election where you can actually count the ballots is up for debate and at the same time you were also having this crazy much wider metaphysical conversation about what is existence both are pretty unnerving <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, because I think that, that it, it, I never thought of it this way. I've always thought of it as a positive thing, the whole multiverse. And, you know, we live in, in a kind of frequency kind of thing. And, you know, talking to you about it just made me realize, like, maybe that is what, why we have things like that, like the QAnon thing. Like, to them, that's not reality. And they've come to, to terms with this whole, there are different realities that, you know, it lets, it makes them believe that whatever's happening is not happening. And that's, that could be very dangerous, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I've always thought it was a positive thing to, to be so open like that, but now that I'm looking at it, like I was, I, I don't know if you play around with psychedelics at all anymore or anything like that, but I, I, I don't uh, often. I've recently got uh, my hands on a mushroom and I decided to take a small little thing and I put on the heart as a monster actually and did some yoga. And then as soon as I finished the yoga, uh, listening to the album, I walked outside and I had this like weird, usually it's like, oh, we are all one. This is great. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it was, it was like more of a negative. We are one. I was like, oh no, <laughs> yeah. oh no, we are all one. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you're trapped with all these people. <laughs> yeah, I'm trapped here on this frequency. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's what I feel like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, because you you can't talk to any. You get, I mean, you can't even talk to these people. It's mm -hmm. like you can't have a conversation. You can't because it's a bit. It, it, you know, it's eventually going to get down to like. Uh, I mean, I had someone at the beginning of the pandemic. Someone I know, a parent of a of a of a child I know came into my house and I was not comfortable. I mean, this was right when it was all coming out. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, he put out his hand to shake my hand. I was like, dude, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Elbows. <laughs> yeah. And he, no, but he got super offended. It was like, oh, so, so you're going to believe all this coronavirus bullshit? <sighs> Yeah. And it was just like, this, it's just, it affects everyone, man. It's well, like, the thing is, there, there's never, a, there's no end with these folks. And, and, a, and it, like, we got past the point where a lot of these people that were denying that the virus was real, mm -hmm. I feel that we've gotten past that point to where they now acknowledge that it is because there's people dying from it. They're like, okay, there is a virus, but, but the vaccine doesn't work, you know? And like, then the vaccine works and they're like, well, yeah, but. The boosters like there's always there's always gonna be that yeah but there's always that one thing they're never gonna be like well you know what i was wrong no yeah no that can't happen because, <laughs> well so that so that brings up the bigger question which is what is really happening is this really is it really the an unprecedented ginormous mega cult that that is 70 million people strong in this country is it really just a cult or is it is it like um a mass infection of narcissism there's a little bit of that for sure uh because it's so many people that's that's the thing that is so you know different to me about it and so because i was talking about this with someone else and like they were trying, oh you know history is rife with moments like this and i'm like Okay, yeah, mo destabilized moments, yes, but I think this particular moment in human history is quite unique yeah. because we never had Facebook or anything like that tool. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is a, it's a mind control situation, and 
that level of engagement and feedback loop that people are getting from social media is just there's no um there's nothing like it in history to compare it to yeah well i think you know i don't want to just blame like the social media i think just the technology overall the fact that we have this these these phones like I, I, you know, I want to use it as a tool. I use it for work and whatever. And, but, and I used to think it was such a great thing to have all of the knowledge of the universe in the, your fingertips. Any answer you need, just Google it. You know what I mean? Or look up a video, how to change a tire, how to, you know, I'm like, okay, that's a really positive thing. But what we're witnessing, I think, is that people are so dependent on this now that they're not really thinking. There's mm -hmm. no need to think. I don't need to do math. I just beep, beep, beep. There it is. You know, uh, you have a question like, oh, who was the actor in that movie? Instead of you using your brain to remember, people are just like, oh, I don't know, IMDb, that guy. And so people are, I don't want to call people dumb, but that's kind of what it is. We're just not, we're not using our brains anymore because everything's right here. So that allows us to become susceptible to all of these different things. We have no way of identifying what's real or not anymore. Because now, now you go, hey, did you hear about QAnon? And you're like, what? What's that? And then they tell you, and you're like, yeah, look, look, there's, it's on your phone. You know what I mean? Like, like all of the other things that you depend on are on the phone. On you're the cheap. phone, so it has to be credible on some level. Right. It's on, it's it, it's on my smartphone. Yeah, my phone's smart. It's smarter than me. Yeah, it knows all of the things. <laughs> yeah, smart. I mean, smartphones are making people dumb. Is yeah. what's happening. Yeah, for sure. Or then, or, or confused confused and and you have to use your brain and this is why i still and i know this may go contrary to what some other people believe but i still play video games because in my opinion it keeps me on my toes it makes me think i do critical thinking i also have hand and eye coordination that i'm working on doing these things i'm not just like mindlessly like Ooh, playing you know stupid things i'm actually I play these games that make me read. They're like novels and like, it, you know, there's, there's things to keep my brain occupied. I also read books. I listen to records, you know, things to keep me thinking because if I spend my entire day, like most children, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of young teenagers spend their days on the phone. They're not really doing any thinking and it makes their brains, you know, sponges and more than they are already. I, I know. And I, I'm, <sighs> I've fallen into the trap of, you know, the sort of zombie scrolling, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm on, not... on, in <laughs> on Instagram and Facebook. But I actually just tried TikTok. I, I've known what TikTok is for a long time. But I actually personally tried it for the first time just last week. Man, the, the, the zombie power of that app is so intense. It oh, took yeah. me like eight seconds and I was just like i just turned to mush mm -hmm. and, and my finger was just automatically doing it and i didn't even do, i couldn't control my like i couldn't snap yeah. out of it <laughs> like i had to slap myself yeah my wife my wife and i have that uh we're, we're kind of have like an accountability kind of relationship on that sense where i when i catch her or she catches me kind of just zombieing out she's like hey hey you know stop it uh, so it, it's it's terrible and the thing about tiktok which i noticed because i I've, I've tried it for the show and everything but when you hit back on your phone to like leave the app or mm -hmm. like if you're watching a video and you hit back it just plays another video <laughs> <laughs> like are you sure you want to leave here's yeah. another one <laughs> you're not leaving yeah. what are you thinking you're not leaving no. you're not uh, leaving here's another uh, video and then like they, they throw stuff at you like oh food or, or like a half naked lady you know what i mean like yeah. they're just trying to keep you there Wait, that didn't yeah <laughs> that, did, that didn't keep you swiping well try this yeah right 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 it's crazy well, we know everything you like maybe yeah. you want something you don't like mm -hmm. here you go yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I mean, screen time, I'm, I'm Apple person, so screen time is been a tool that I definitely use for myself and for my kids. You set a timer, I don't have Apple, so I don't know what it does, but you set a timer for it to, like, remind you, like, hey, you've been on your phone for too long? <laughs> yes. Okay. It, it, it tells you your analytics. Mm. Like, but does it what? warn you? Does it have, like, notifications? Like, you can, you can set? set, you can set. You can, you can set it up how you want you and you can just turn it off mm -hmm. um 
but you can also control your your children's devices and ha have them automatically turn off mm -hmm. ever at a certain time you can uh, um, control which which apps but the best well not the best but one of the great things about it for kids is that the parents can see the breakdown of their usage okay you know so i can see if he's on monroe uh, sorry i should have said that if he's on a certain <laughs> uh school website he's studying right 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 if he's on tiktok he's not studying <laughs> yeah, he's not studying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true that's good though i'm glad they have that they you know that should be standard and we should and another solution aside from the driver's license should be like regular breaks like we had I remember not too long ago, Facebook and all the Facebook things went down for like six hours. You should do that more often. Every once in yeah. a while, on purpose. Just stop. Go Just outside. Stop. <laughs> Turns off on the weekends. Oh, man. You would, oh, half of society would collapse. People would, Probably. what do you mean? I can't post about my nightclub situation? Yeah, but. <laughs> Nah, I hear you. I hear you. But hey, I, I think we went over on my time. I feel bad for. Oh next. yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> but uh, I'll wrap it up. You know, the new album's coming out very soon. I'm very excited. This has been a crazy, crazy year for music. Uh, you know, deservedly so, since we've been through so much. Uh, so everybody's got stuff to say. But right when I thought the year was over, I'm like, oh cool. You know, I got my albums of the year set up. You guys came and dropped <laughs> drop another album on me. So. I'm excited to hear the rest of it. The, the the one song I heard, Headstand, was, you know, fantastic. Very, very trippy sounding. It, it I, I I like to zone out to your music a lot. And I wanted to ask you, so we expect more segues? Is that still a thing? Uh, the, the segues are minim, minimal on this record. Okay. So, so we, you know, we did... I wish we would have started with a, a certain methodology on them and just kind of stuck with it. But instead, we've kind of, it's uh, very unorganized. But what, what's happening on this record is we just felt like it, the moments that, that you could consider segues, they're shorter and they're more like just like the sort of like embers of a song rather than a full new composition. Okay. So they're not tracked out separately. Gotcha. And they're just, and they are so just much more minimal, but you'll still, you'll still feel like a, a sort of that uh, connectivity between the songs that we like to do. Awesome. Awesome. I'm excited for it, man. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I had a great, you know, very good conversation. I hope we didn't bring everybody down too much. With the topics at hand, but I mean, it is what it is. This is it what is we're living. what it is exactly. You know, uh, but I appreciate being able to talk to you about it. You know, and seeing your take on it, and uh, I I hope that everything works out in terms of touring for you. I hope I can get to see you guys play again soon, uh, and I hope that you know you you don't give up the fight. Keep going. Mm. I think your music helps us. Um, I think a lot of musicians' music helps us, but. Particularly to you, uh, you, you to, ha to have you here and, and making new music and continuing on is a very good thing. So please keep going. Thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. Damn it. Uh, everybody on the uh, YouTubes that's watching this, if you want to follow Failure, go to the social media. It's at, is it Failure Band? I forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. fail Failure Band. Failure Band, at Failure Band. And you have your own blue check mark social media yeah it might be failure band ig for instagram let's uh let's find it for everyone huh real quick let's see failure see i can't even go to do things that i want to do without stuff popping up on your phone that's how it goes failure band ig you're right it is failure band ig uh but yeah follow them there and you have at ken andrews for yours yeah Andrews Ken. Andrews Ken. Yeah, Andrews backwards. Ken. Okay. Yep. Andrews Ken. Um, I'm assuming you had your your solo, uh, what's coming EP in 2020. I mean, is there more of that coming as well? 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm so focused on this on the new failure record right now. And yeah. and and the trajectory of the next year, probably mm -hmm. dealing with that. So uh, yeah, I will definitely do solo music again and I just don't have a plan for it right now. Anytime soon. Anytime soon. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, please pick up the new album. It's Wild Type Droid, December third. Uh, like I said, go check out Headstand. It's fantastic, and uh, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, take care. Okay, bye, Eddie. Bye.